Thanks for coming to learn more about Give Sign Up and ticket events specifically. If you're curious as to whether you should set something up as a ticket or a race, please contact your account manager or email info at run sign up or info at give sign up and somebody can help answer your question for your specific use case because there's a lot of different use cases. So instead of doing a presentation today, I'm actually going to do a live demo of how you can create your ticket event, kind of starting from the beginning, which is the wizard and customizing your ticket event website, adding in donations and all that good stuff. So when you go to givesignup.org, you're actually going to be using your same login as Run Sign Up. You don't need to create a new account or anything. So if you have a login and a password for Run Sign Up, the same thing is going to work on Give Sign Up. When you get to our website, the first option is going to be create a ticket event. When you click create your ticket event, it's going to take you into a screen that you're pretty familiar with because it looks really similar to the race wizard, which is how you set up your races on run sign up. So today we're going to walk through how to set up a bowling fundraiser. I just went with bowling. So this is the first step of the wizard, and this is where you're going to be setting up the basic information about your ticketed event. So at the beginning, you're going to add your event name. You're going to add a quick description about your event. This has the editor available, so you can kind of customize how this is going to appear on the website. On all of our websites, we have a questions button. So this is like similar to the race websites. We always have a questions button so that participants or attendees can easily get in touch with you if they have any questions about the event. So this is the contact email that should be receiving those questions. So if you're at a larger nonprofit, maybe this is just a generic info at email address or it's a personal email address. You have the option to add a location for your event. It's not required, but if you want to, you can add the place where it's going to be taken place. And then the third option is your event visibility. So you can, if you're working on the event, you're not quite ready to start selling tickets, leave it in draft. Private means that we're not going to optimize it for search engines. So if it's kind of just an insular event, like you just want it for your volunteers, you don't really want people finding it on the internet, list it as private. And then public, it's going to get the same treatment as race websites where we do that search engine optimization. The last part is going to be creating your event URL. So once you have this, it can't be changed. If you want it to be changed, you need to contact an account manager or you can email info at givesignup.org. We have an admin tool on the back end for just, you know, people like Alyssa and myself and Natalie to use, but we don't give you guys the option to change this once it's been set. So this is what your event URL is going to be. However, we offer free domain and subdomain support, which I can show you on the back end. What that will do is let you create your own domain. So if Semper Fi Fund wanted to use this, you could set up the URL tickets.semperfifund.org, and then that gives you that fully branded, clean look in your URL that you want. Okay, so the next step of the ticket wizard is creating ticket groups. The first thing that I want to say to start this off is Steps two and three are not the most user friendly at the moment. And just so you know, we recognize this. A big part of our development efforts for Give Sign Up in 2020 is going to be modifying this wizard to make it simpler to get your event set up. There's a ton of power right now that's in the wizard. And that can be a little bit overwhelming the first time you're going through and creating an event. And so our goal for 2020 is to move that functionality and power that's in the wizard into the dashboard and give you just a cleaner, simpler interface to, to set up your event. However, it's fully functional right now. All that power exists. And so you can go in and create your ticket event. I just kind of wanted to start with, we recognize this isn't the most user friendly and it's going to be worked on in 2020. So for my bowling event, I'm going to let people buy individual tickets. And so I have a ticket group name that's called Individual, and I have a quick description just letting people know that when they buy a ticket, it's going to come with their rental shoes and two games, if that's what you call bowling. I don't know what the words are for bowling. Um, but you can, you know, do whatever you want for these descriptions. You'll be able to see on the front end how this looks to users. You are able to set a start and end time for your ticket group. So this 
start and end time is the event date, when the actual event is happening. So you'll see here, I've decided my bowling fundraiser is going to take place on the 15th, and it's going to go from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. This is optional. You do not have to set a time and a date for your ticket groups, but it can be nice in terms of displaying and letting people know when the event is happening. So within my ticket group, I have two different types of tickets that I want to sell. And the reason I'm setting up two different levels of tickets is because I'm going to offer them at different prices. So my first ticket level is the adult ticket. And my second ticket level is a child ticket. And again, this is just because I want to offer different pricing for these two different ticket options. So that's my first ticket group. I'm also going to add an option for this bowling event that's a team. And teams of four can sign up to enter the team competition. So I'm similarly going to have my event dates be from on the 15th because the team competition is going on at the same time. Here, I'm going to have one type of ticket. It's just going to be a ticket that's going to be part of the team. However, because I want my team signing up all at once, I'm going to say that if you purchase teams, you have to purchase four tickets at one time because I want the whole team to be signed up at once. And so this require multiple of basically gives me the flexibility to have teams sign up for ticket events. I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go to the next step. So that first step was just defining the different types of tickets that I'm going to be selling to my fundraiser event. Now my third step is going to be setting up the prices. So this is going to be when I'm going to allow people to buy tickets and how much the tickets are going to cost. So I just click that little edit icon on the right hand side and that expands my pricing for individual tickets. So for individual tickets, I opened sales yesterday and I'm going to sell them through the event. And I have two different levels of my tickets. My first is adult and my second is child. So for the adult tickets, I'm saying that they cost $20 each for my kid tickets. I want to make them $10. So you're probably noticing here that there's these boxes and they're kind of confusing. So I just want to explain it for a minute. Basically, this Pricing setup lets you automate discounts to incentivize people to buy more than one ticket at one time. So if I enter a two here, I'm saying that when you buy an adult ticket and you buy one or two of them, each ticket is going to cost $20. You'll see it automatically popped up with a new thing and it's saying three open. So I'm going to say if you buy three or more tickets, I'm actually going to give you a little discount because you know, you're signing up more people for my event and I want to encourage you to do that. So if I decide to buy three or more tickets, my discount's gonna go down to $18 for each ticket. You'll see here that you can add another purchase period. This is like exactly like a price increase in races. So you can set up different registration periods. As you get closer to your event, you want to increase the price, incentivize people to sign up to get that lower price. Okay, a lot of nonprofits have expressed that they want more detailed information on the people who are attending their events. And this comes from, I think, two different perspectives. One is you want to get the supporter contact information. And two, you guys are putting on sometimes more complicated events where you have galas and you need to know people's meal options ahead of time. So the personal information collection gives you that flexibility to say, I want to just collect the information of the person who's buying tickets or I also want to collect the information for each ticket that I'm selling to my event. So by default, the person who's buying the ticket is going to have to enter their first name, last name, and email address. And we require this because we're an online system and we need somewhere to send that receipt for the purchase that they've just made. You'll see here that there's additional options for information you can collect. This is limited to basic contact and address information. If you want to collect more information, that's going to be later on in the dashboard using custom questions. This is just basic information that you want to collect. Here for my bowling fundraiser, I don't really care about getting 
the email address or, you know, locations of all my attendees. But I would like to know their names ahead of time so that I can, you know, personalize the check-in process or something. And so here you'll see that I have enabled information collection for each ticket. And I'm going to require that everyone, when they buy tickets, you have to enter the first name and last name for each ticket. The other option is caps. So if you have a limited amount of space, you can only sell a certain amount of tickets, you're going to want to set up caps so that you don't oversell your event. This is also important if you have like different times. So if you have a bowling fundraiser and you have games at 12, 1, 2, 3, you can actually set those up as different ticket levels and you can say how many people max can sign up for each of those. So it gives you a lot of power and flexibility with making sure that your event logistics are run well. So I'm going to come into here and I'm going to set up the ticket pricing for the team. So I'm going to start selling my tickets today and I'm also going to sell them. No, I'll do a price increase. So I'll sell them until March 2020. I'm going to say that when you buy team tickets, I'm actually going to make them a little bit cheaper at $15 per ticket. And then I'm going to have another purchase period that starts the next day and goes through the event. And this time the price is going to go up to $18. So if they buy before March 1st, $15. If they buy after the 1st, then they're going to be paying $18 for each ticket. Similarly, with my teams, I want to know who is on each team. So I'm just going to require that they enter the first name and last name for each of these. And I'm going to hide this. So you'll see here when I'm selecting this dropdown, you have three choices. So you can make these optional fields or required fields as well. The required is going to have the little asterisk, won't let them continue unless they enter the information. The optional, they have the choice to enter it, but they don't have to. I personally think that optional is a really nice way to go with email address for individual ticket holders because you don't want to hold somebody up and force them to enter individual email addresses because like they may not know them and it's just a lot of typing especially if somebody is buying tickets on their phone. Making it optional is nice because then if I want to I can add it but I don't have to. Okay so I've saved that. This next part is just the waiver. For a lot of ticket events, you don't necessarily, you might not want a waiver. That's a big part of race registration. Like you have to have a waiver. We timestamp that in our system because with races, there's a lot of liability. For your ticket event, you may or may not want to have a waiver. You have that flexibility to decide how that waiver should be signed, how that information should be collected. And you're also able to customize the text on it. So if, for example, you need like a photo disclaimer for your event, this would be like a good place to collect that signature, but you don't have to have one. So the last step is payment. So you'll notice at the top, we have this little qualifier that Give Sign Up only does business with qualified 501c3s. And if you expand it, that's our definition of what a 501c3 is to us that's qualified. The reason is that we are not a GoFundMe. We're not doing individual crowdfunding. That's not what we are. We're a platform that's built for nonprofits. And so we want to make sure that we're only doing business with nonprofits. If you've been a run sign up customer for more than a year, meaning you've had a race on our platform, you've done registration, we've paid you out, there haven't been chargebacks, you have a good history with us, and you're a 501c3, you can use Give Sign Up. If you're new to give sign up and run sign up and you don't have that history, we are requiring that you have over 50,000 of revenue per year. We check that just by looking at the public 990 form that is online publicly available. Some of the other things that we look at is we want to make sure there's two or more board members. We don't want to do business with like sketchy 501c3s that are set up as an individual for like income tax purposes or something. And so we have this underwriting process. The first time that you use Give Sign Up, if you are a Run Sign Up customer and you have a payment account on Run Sign Up and you're actually the payment account owner, when you get to this step, you're going to see your payment accounts already here. So you can select which payment account you want it to go to. And when you click Save Settings, it's going to go through a quick underwriting review process. So our team is going to look at it, make sure you're approved for Give Sign Up. The first time that you get approved for Give Sign Up, you're approved to use any Give Sign Up 
stuff. So that means that you don't have to wait for that underwriting process, which can take maybe up to a day. You can set up your donation websites. You can set up additional ticket events. If you've used Run Sign Up, but you aren't the payment account owner on Run Sign Up, there's an option called Set Up Later. You can send an invite to the payment account owner so that they can link your existing Run Sign Up payment account. If you're a new nonprofit, you don't have a payment account on Run Sign Up, and you are not the person in charge of finances and shouldn't be setting up the payment account, invite your CFO, invite the treasurer to come and set up that payment account here. We also have a third option called test mode. So if you are new to give sign up, you want to just create a test ticket event, you're not sure if you want to use it yet, you can enable test mode. That's going to let you test the ticket purchase path, but not actually purchase a ticket. But that's nice for when you're kind of testing out the system, seeing if it works for you, and you don't want to set up or link a payment account to it. So I'm linking my payment account. You have the option here to pass the processing fee onto your registrant, split it, or have it come out of the charge. If your nonprofit absorbs that cost, the number one thing I would recommend is do opt-in covered fees. So you can, if you are covering the cost, the processing fee cost, you're going to absorb it. You can give registrants the option to pay the processing fee. So if they don't want to, they don't have to. But we see when you offer this option, typically something like 80, 90% of people will opt to pay it. And so that basically makes it free or very, very low cost to use give sign up ticket events because the only cost to use in give sign up ticket events is the processing fee. In terms of processing fees, it's the same processing fee as run sign up. So the same processing fee that is applied to registrations on Run Sign Up is applied to tickets on Give Sign Up. And with donations, it's always going to be that flat 4% fee for the processing fee on donations. So I saved my settings. You can click Next. And I set up my event. So there's two options. One is to view my website. So if I click that, it's just going to show the quick front end of what I've set up with my individual tickets here, my team ticket here. The button that I want you to press is Customize Now. The Customize Now button takes you to your dashboard. And when you get to your dashboard, for all of you Run Sign Up users, this looks really familiar because it is. You have the same menu search in the left hand. You have really similar options to customize and you have your little view website in the right hand corner. So it's a very familiar look, feel, layout to it, but it has different settings because this is for tickets and not for races. So the first page that the Customize Now button takes you to is to your event customization. So you have a couple of default theme colors that we just give you as an option because our UX designers say that these combinations look nice. So if you don't know what you're doing with colors, maybe just choose one of these. The other thing you can do is you can add a custom color scheme. So you can either pick colors or if your nonprofit is more focused on branding and you kind of have a brand, you have a set of colors, you can actually just copy and paste that hex color code into here so that your, your website matches your nonprofit's brand. I use the Run Sign Up brand colors for mine. Your next option is going to be to upload a logo. So I did this so I wouldn't take a long time, but you can choose a logo image for your event or maybe it's your nonprofit's logo. You have that flexibility here. The third option is a banner. This is one of the changes that's coming really soon. We're going to be giving you a bunch of gift sign up banners. These are just copied over from races, so they're not really applicable to a lot of ticket events. But basically, we're going to have a bunch of different banners for kind of common nonprofit events that we see being set up on our platform, as well as some generic, beautiful backgrounds so that you do not see this blue anymore. But you can pick a banner here. You can upload a custom one for your event. The other thing you can do is you can add your social links. So those will be automatically put on the front end of the website. The other thing that's really cool is you can customize all of your wording. So we default to this ticket language, but you can have your own language. If you want to use registration, you can come in here and change it. I'm not going to go through each of these, but there's little, you know, help icons so you can understand better where they're going to be applied on the front end. The one that I want to call attention to is, you know, we're give sign up, run sign up. So we have this default sign up button that's on all the races. We have given ticket events the option to customize this. So 
I can say buy tickets instead of sign up, which is really nice. A lot of nonprofits like that option. So you have that ability to customize your call to action. And of course, that's sticky. So it's really nice on mobile and on the web on your computer. When you're scrolling down to find out more information, you always have that call to action at the top. So just to highlight, I'm not going to go through setting up a domain because it takes a bit of time to get it verified, like it's like 45 minutes or something. But this is where you can add your domain. And we have very detailed articles on how you can set up a domain or a subdomain, whether you're on a GoDaddy URL that you have or a Google URL. And if you really want to just do this today, you want to create a ticket event and you want to add a custom domain to it, go to the demo room. There's different desks set up there. But if you're having trouble, you don't quite know how to set up a domain, go find Andrew Burke specifically, and ask him to help you, and he can get that set up for you. I'll just note that we do have .org support, as well as a number of others, but for nonprofits, I think a lot of you are .orgs. The third thing I want to show is a cover page. So you get this default page here, which is just a general race website, but we also have the option for you to create a beautiful cover page to kind of personalize and brand your nonprofit event. So just to show you a finished example that I have on a test server, this is for a charity golf tournament. I have the ability to add additional descriptions, create clear calls to action here. You can link to external websites. So if you have a separate nonprofit website where you want people to learn more information, you can add buttons that link to that. Another really cool thing is that you can embed videos. So if you took a cool video from last year's event, you can actually just have that pop out on the website. It keeps them on the page and it's just a really nice user experience. And then over time, like we have in race websites, we're going to be adding more and more data-driven components. And so right now you can add a countdown clock to your event, which is a really nice touch. In 2020, Alyssa, who's sitting there, is going to be working on building out fundraising campaigns for Give Sign Up. It's going to be really exciting. But basically, there's going to be ways to tie fundraising campaigns to your ticket events. And that's, you know, how you can kind of feature fundraisers like you can on races. We're going to have that ability in tickets as well. So I just thought it was worthwhile to show you how easy it is to set up a cover page because it doesn't take any sort of you know, you don't need to know HTML, you don't need to know how to code, you just need to know how to like upload an image. So when you create a cover page, you have two different sections. The first section is going to be the header. So that's going to be this image. And you can upload one or multiple images to this. So I click the plus sign, I'm going to call this a header. And I'm going to choose a background image and it's going to be this one. So I just clicked an image that I had saved. It's a picture of a bowling alley. This is a tool called Croppy, so you can kind of zoom in, zoom out, get the image to look how you want. When you're doing this, you'll see suggested sizes for your images. For this cover image, it's going to be 2,000 by 800 pixels. So I've uploaded that image. I can put an overlay color on this. So that's going to give like a, a shade to it. So instead of just displaying the image, it's going to shade it. If you have an image that has text on it, so if you made your own like pretty display image for your event and it has text and you want it to display, and you don't want any sort of covering over it, you're going to say no overlay cover color and display image without cropping. And that's going to keep it formatted so that your words never get cut off on that image that you've designed. For this one, I don't have words, so I'm just going to keep an overlay color. And I'm going to add the name of my event called Bowling Fundraiser. And I'm going to add a quick button that's going to go into registration. So I'm going to add a button that says buy tickets, and it's going to be pink. And at the top, you're going to see what your cover page is going to look like to the user. So you can make sure that like the colors you chose look nice and whatever, you can play around with it. It's pretty simple to change things. Once you're happy, you're just going to click save. And that has already given me the first part of my cover page. So go down to content to add more content to this page. You have a variety of options of what you can add. So you can add full width 
content sections. You can add two column sections. You can add custom actions. You can add video. So I'm going to do a quick content example. I'm going to call it content one. The labels that you're doing here, it's just for your own back end, just recognizing what you have in things. So for this one, I'm going to upload a picture and it's going to be a picture of, oh, sorry, beer. And I'm going to have that there and I'm just going to have that picture. And next to it, I'm going to have drinks and food included. Um, have drinks and food. And then I'm going to have a description included with your ticket purchase. And you'll see how that's going to display. So that's one content section that's been created. I'm going to just add quickly another. And on here, I'm going to choose to put a video. And I just want to show you this to emphasize how simple it is. I found a bowling video on how to bowl. <laughs> and so what you can do is just like find a video you like, copy and paste it, and then paste it into there. It's going to pull in that display image from the YouTube video. We do this at Run Sign Up a lot, but we make a lot of our own videos. By we, I mean Andrew Sigwart makes a lot of videos. And it's really easy to upload your own videos to YouTube. You just click the little plus up here and you can upload from like a file. So it's easy if you have video at your event to get that into a file on YouTube and then have that display on your website. I'm going to call this content too. And then next to it, I'm just going to add a button and I'm going to call it donate because I want people to donate. And that's how that is going to look. I can add multiple buttons here. I can add additional content if I want, but I'm just gonna do this for now because you get the picture. But basically, you can play around with this. This is actually really ugly, but if you spend time on it, you can make it look pretty nice. And it's I like it because basically the whole point of hosting events is to spread your mission and like what your nonprofit is doing. And having a landing page like this that's beautiful, it matches your nonprofit's colors, it kind of just promotes your mission to everyone who's coming to the event. I think it's really important. I think it's very important to have a landing page that like reflects your nonprofit rather than just a generic information page with a little ticket that is not branded to your nonprofit. So this is beautiful, even though this one's ugly. Just so you know, on mobile phone with these half content sections, they stack. So it's really elegant. So it's not like a weird user experience or anything, which is another nice thing about using our websites. They are optimized for mobile, and that is where people are finding out information about your event. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to add is questions. So I want to collect additional information from my attendees. This is really nice. This is a lot nicer than how you set up custom questions and run sign up. Custom questions and races will eventually get updated. So it's kind of a balance like there's stuff that's coming out to races that you're going to want in ticket events and there's stuff in ticket events that you're going to want to run sign up. It's not a simple copy and paste thing. If you want to ask questions about that, you can ask Alyssa. It does take a lot of development work, so it's just prioritizing when we're going to get to that. You'll kind of see that slowly happening in your race dashboard now. The big release that you guys probably have noticed as Run Sign Up users is we updated the UX for donations, fundraising, team fundraisers on the back end. We also updated the user experience for adding custom content to your race website. So you see those things come out. They're all incremental. They're all kind of behind the scenes. So it just kind of just happens between clicks sometimes. But I'm going to click create a question. So the first question I want to ask is, what's your team name? Because I want to have a team name competition. So I can choose the type of response that I want to collect. So for this one, it's just open text. You can actually add little images to display next to your questions if you want. And then here is where you have a lot of the power of our ticket questions. So for this one, I want to force people to respond to it. And I don't want to ask individuals because that would be confusing. I only want to collect team information from teams. So I'm only going to ask people in the team ticket group. And I have, you know, the ability to add additional information. When I'm done with my question, I have two save options, click either one, and then that's been saved here. 
I want to add another question. Will you be renting shoes? And I'm just going to do, I'll just do a yes, no question for this one. And I want to ask each person that's buying tickets just so I have an idea of that. So I'm going to save question. You can go back and you can edit and I can save it. So once I've created my questions, I can really easily rearrange the order that they're asked in. So I can just drag and drop and then save that order. It gives you a lot of power to collect that additional information from your tickets. So this is access. So if you set up the ticket event and you want somebody else to have access to it, you're going to add their information. It's going to send them an invite to accept and have access to your ticket dashboard. If you want to remove, just click delete and save settings. Right now, it's an all or nothing access with tickets. We don't have the different levels of access. That's something that will come over time. Next, we have notifications. The notifications for tickets are all in the new style of notifications, and the new style has been applied to almost all the race notifications at this point. I would recommend if you set up a ticket event, take the time to go in here and customize the notifications that are going out because it gives you an opportunity to add your messaging and any event information to the automated emails that go out. So the first one is tickets purchased. So this is going to go out whenever somebody buys tickets. You'll see here it has these like percent things. These are email placeholders. They're going to pull in the automated data from our system to appear here. So it's going to show people what their ticket summary is. You know, it's going to show them the QR code. All these are required to keep in here. But what you can do is you can add additional text here. So let's just say this is where your nonprofit's messaging is going to go. You can add this like thank you for coming to our event. You're able to customize that. You have these formatting options up here. This automatically pulls in your ticket event logo so it's branded. Once you customize it, be sure to click save changes. Also use this test at the top to send yourself an email so that you know what it looks like and you can kind of proofread it, make sure that it is showing the content that you want. I think that's really important. The other one I wanted to emphasize is the donation confirmation email that goes out. You should 100% customize this email to say your custom thank you messaging on here. So be sure to do that. The other two that I wanted to show you are new. It's around your event communication. And ticket event reminder, you can schedule it to go out before your event to remind your attendees about it. Just as a note, you can only send one ticket event reminder. So we don't want to bombard people with emails. So I would recommend setting this to send like a day before your event. The unique thing about the ticket event reminder is you have this, the confirmation code. That's the QR code for the scanning. So if you have a large ticket event and you're going to be checking in like hundreds of people, make sure you send out this email because you're going to be able to use the ticket check-in app and it's just going to be faster like what Brian was saying if people have their QR codes available. So by putting this in the email, sending it out right before the event, it's going to be at the top of people's inboxes and they can pull that up on their phones more easily. As a note, ticket checking up, you can also search by name of the person who bought the tickets and you can pull it up that way. You have that, you know, in case people don't bring their phones, but this is really convenient way. The other nice thing about this is you can schedule a thank you note to go out after your event. If you're tired after your event happens, you may not think to send a thank you, but you can schedule it to send like a couple hours or a day after your event happens. If we just have some default language here. You can delete this, have your own thank you, but I recommend setting this up to send. It's just a nice touch. Check-in app. The check-in app is an app on your phone. It's called the Ticket Check-in app. You can search for it. The only thing you need to do on your dashboard to enable it so that your data can be accessed is create a password. So you can set a password and then you can set a hint. I usually just make the hint whatever my password is, but whatever is easiest for you guys. Don't make it super complicated if you're going to have like 10 volunteers trying to download the app on your on their phones because it's just unnecessary. Oops. No, don't update my passwords. Okay. It's telling me my password is too insecure. We did some PCI related updates recently. And so just to make sure our system is as secure as possible, I'm just not going to enable it right now. 
So I'm going to skip down to <laughs> Promotions tab. This lets you put in your Pixel ID from Facebook. This lets you put in your Google Analytics code. So if you need to do that sort of tracking, you have the option to do it. Here you have social sharing. This is also a repeat from what Brian was talking about in races, but come in here and customize the images that are being shared, customize the message that's being shared. It's just a nice thing to do. And you can have your own images here, add the content that you want people sharing on social media. When people finish buying their ticket, you can choose to like have a little share on Facebook thing pop up and you can customize that here. Referral tracking, I'm just going to quickly touch on this. This is the same as what's in races, but when somebody finishes buying their tickets, it will generate a unique referral URL link that they can share with their friends and family on social media. So I can enable referral refunds. Basically, I can just create codes and ask people to share them and kind of do some tracking that way. But the real way to get people to share your event is to add an incentive to make them want to share it. And so what you can do is you can set different rewards. So you can say if you use your link and get five people to buy or you sell five tickets, you can get a refund for what you spent of X amount. And you have that flexibility to make sure your balance never goes below a certain amount. So I think referrals have been really powerful for races. And our guess is that they're also eventually going to be powerful for tickets. So it'll be interesting to see how nonprofits use this. It's really unique. It's coming from the people who are your supporters and actually attending your event and not some weird website. So I just wanted to show you what Create a List is. So this year we added ticket holders as an option for the CRM. So you can come in here and you can create a list of people who have bought a ticket. And my event wasn't very popular. <laughs> um, but basically, you can go in here. You can say, these are my ticket purchasers. I'll just say they're from 2020. And then I created a list. So I have a number of lists here. And it gives me options of what I can do. So I can just export this as a CSV or whatever if I want to get it out of the system. But the thing that I want to point out is there's this option to create a promotion. And so I can call this email. I just switched away from my bowling event, just so you know. I'm on my Support Liberia event. So this is a really simple thing. I can just send an email to my people who bought tickets this year, and I want to say event information. And I just want to put in some content here that's simple about my event. I'll just leave it as content here for now. You have the option to send yourself a test email, but it just lets me send a quick email to the people in that list. It's not as flexible and customizable as run sign up email marketing. If you need all that power and like, you know, the templates and everything, do that from your race dashboard, like just create a list and put that in as a custom list or create a list, use it in whatever email marketing platform you prefer to use. But this is just a very simple email notification. The store, you can sell additional items to your event. So here I have a t-shirt set up. When you set up your store item, you can add a price. You can say when the sales are available. You can say when people can buy it. And you can also add different variants to it. So for example, I have a t-shirt that ha comes in different sizes and it also comes in different colors. So here you'll see I set up my different options for sizes. And here I've set up my different options for what the color of the t-shirt is. There's a ton of flexibility with customizing like who can buy items if you want to restrict them to certain ticket groups. You can also customize the display to make it look pretty in the purchase path. Another big thing of why nonprofits use give sign up ticket events is you can collect donations when people buy their tickets. So you can enable donations. The first thing to point out is you can allow recurring donations. The description message is going to be your nonprofit's mission. It can be a specific thing that you're fundraising for with the event. It can just be copy and paste of your mission. Donations closed message. If you want to stop accepting donations at a certain date, you can add your own message. If you're doing that, I would suggest including a link to your, your, your just open-ended donations that you have for your nonprofit. And then here you can upload your own logo if it's different than the event logo that you have. 
or you can just keep the event logo. It doesn't matter. So save donation settings. So those are basic donations enabled. And then I come down here and I have a ton of other things I can set up. Because I'm running out of time soon, I'm just going to add a couple of quick donation levels. So I'm going to say people can donate $10, $250, or $1,000. You can add additional descriptions to your different donation levels. I'm going to go back to my setup, and I have other things I can add. I can add a checkout add-on. So if people don't make a donation when they're buying the ticket, I can have that little checkbox show on the checkout page that just says, do you want to add $3 to support our mission? So I'm going to add that. And then we're going to buy some tickets. So when somebody goes to buy tickets, they click buy tickets and they have these little selectors so they can choose how many they want. So I'm going to buy, no, I'm going to buy a team. So you'll see when I bought my team, it automatically jumped from zero to four because I've been requiring people to buy four tickets to be on a team. So I'm logged into Run Sign Up right now. If I weren't, it would collect my first name, last name, email address as the account purchaser up here. And then it's going to give me my ticket information here. The nonprofits I've been talking to have really, really liked this because oftentimes they say that somebody from an office who's not even attending the event will purchase a bunch of tickets. And they really like that the, the person purchasing can put their information, but they don't necessarily have to tie it to any of the individual tickets for the group. If they are, it's really easy to copy. And no one's going to have to log into an account to buy tickets. There's no reason to do that. So I'm having my family come to my event with me. So will I be renting shoes? So I can select this for each person. My parents were in a bowling league, so they actually have their own shoes now. And then I can come up with a team name. So this is my donation page. So this is going to show my mission statement, my nonprofit logo, and it's going to give me the option to make a donation here. Looks pretty similar to how it looks in Run Sign Up. I do have the option to make this recurring donation if you enable that, but you can also only allow one-time donations. Can make my donation go further by paying the processing fee, and I have dedication settings here. This is the store item that we set up, so it has a new look to it from how it looks in Run Sign Up. But I can go in here and I can select my T-shirt that I want, and I'm also going to buy a second one that's yellow, and I'm going to buy two of those. So it makes it really easy to buy store items and you'll see those different variants, those different types that you set up, how they apply to a store item here. And then this is also familiar. So this is where the processing fee information is shown. And because I have that option when I set up my payment account to allow supporters to pay the processing fee, you'll see that here. And it's highlighted, it's emphasized with your, your color themes that you set up for your website. And I can easily uncheck that and it's not going to make me pay that processing fee. And then here's just a review of my ticket information. And then this is where I would pay for my ticket. I'm not going to because... This is on production. So just in terms of ticket management, so if I buy a ticket and I want to resend my confirmation email or I made a donation and I want to resend that, we allow your users to look up their tickets here so they can enter their email address and they'll get an email from our system that has their ticket confirmation. Same with donations. If they need to resend that for like their tax purposes or whatever, they can look this up and it will resend. On the back end, you do have some management options with your tickets. So the reports will show you your ticket purchases here, and you can click the Manage button here. This will give you a report of the individual tickets. So the first thing that you can do is you can transfer them to a different ticket type within your event. If they don't want to enter, if they can't find the ticket lookup, you can resend their confirmation email here. We also have the ability to issue refunds. You can issue full, partial, or custom amounts of refunds. It's really flexible. I bought this for $0 using a coupon, so I don't have the ability to issue a refund. But for paid tickets, you do have that option. 
Speaking of coupons, really quick, I'll just show you. You can add a coupon. Just call it whatever you want. You can offer it as an overall discount, a discount on a specific ticket, and it can be a dollar amount or a percent. It's really nice here. It will automatically tell you what that discount is going to look like. So if you're offering a percent, it just reminds you. Johanna was talking about the power of time-limited coupons. So I recommend having an expiration date on your coupons. And you also have a lot of advanced settings. So basically, any sort of coupon that you want to issue, you're going to be able to do that from Give Sign Up ticket events. The other thing I want to point out is that you can add extra fees to your event. So like some charity golf tournaments, there's like a, a course fee or something. So you can add that to be a separate line item. You don't necessarily, if you don't want to bake it into the ticket cost, you can add a, an extra fee. Like in this example, maybe I want to do the rental shoes as an extra fee and it's going to cost $5. And so I can apply that to my tickets. But that is an overview of tickets that took a lot longer than I thought, but I have a couple minutes for questions. If you have more specific or detailed questions, you can go to the demo room. Elizabeth is our newest hire at run sign up slash give sign up. She is the give sign up account manager. So if you currently use run sign up and you have an account manager, they can help you get set up with tickets. And Elizabeth is an additional resource for more you know, advanced ticket questions, or if you want to learn more about getting getting your nonprofit ticket event set up. Yes? So if you did, um, like, the group features, so say I have, they need to buy 10 tickets because they're filling a table of 10 for an event. If they don't know their ticket holders' names yet, it, will it let them complete that without putting in all 10 names? So I would make those fields optional if that's what you want. That feature is actually going to get a bit more powerful soon. So what we're working on in 2020 is sponsors for ticket events. And so with sponsors, what we're going to give you the ability to do with that table of 10 is to basically create them as like a hidden sponsor. And they'll have the option when they purchase that table, they can either enter the information for their 10 you know, people at the table or they can say, I don't know this information yet, send me a sign up link. And it'll basically create a reserved entry with that, those parameters that you define. So 10 tickets at X price. And they can send it to their different table members and those table members can sign up themselves. Or they can use that link at a later date and just fill in their information when they know it. I think that's going to be really powerful <coughs> because like, if you want to collect meal options in addition, it's nicer to have the people at the table fill that information out themselves. That will start slowly coming out incrementally in 2020. The first step of that will be reserved entries and financial invoicing for tickets. So if somebody wants to pay offline, giving you that whole option to send an invoice, they can pay online, they can pay offline, you can track it, and then reserved entries. Will that same option be available for those on it? It's already available. Yes. Reserved entries are in run sign up. They're extremely powerful. And sponsors and tickets, a lot of the functionality is going to be copied over from run sign up because the run sign up sponsor platform is just great. It's really, really nice. And so we want to bring that over to tickets. Is there a way to be notified? And this is a RSU question too. If the rank um, if a person makes a donation in excess of the 250 limit without having to pull the report and go through, is there a way to be notified? In races, yes. In tickets, not yet, but it's going to come. So in donations, when I go to set up, I can go to donation summary email and I can set up a new summary email. And what you want to set it up for is what the minimum donation amount. So I think um, the Komen Philly team sets this at $500. So they set it at $500 and then their recipients for it are like the CEO of Komen Philly. And so she gets an email notification if somebody makes a donation in excess of $500 and she will give them a personal phone call or a personal thank you email. I think that's a very nice thing. So this is in races right now and it's called donation summary email. You can set up multiple and it will eventually translate over to tickets. 
I think it's lunchtime. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much for coming. <laughs>